Hello, today I'm going to show you how to run uh, Cinebench R15 efficiently. Um, we're just going to start off by running Cinebench. Um, we have a Phenom 2X6 uh, 10550T processor here. Uh, it's 6 cores, 6 threads. Uh, I think it's something, I have no idea what it is at stock, but currently um, I've got it at 3.3 gigahertz uh, on 1.4 volts so we're just going to start by running Cinebench I haven't done anything, I've literally just booted into Windows and uh, run Cinebench So, there you go, first score is 493. So, that's where we're going to have our baseline from. You can see there, 493, 3.3 gigahertz. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go into the control panel. We're going to go on all control panel items, then we're going to go into system, then we're going to go into advanced system settings, and here it will say there will be computer name, hardware, advanced, system protection and remote, you want to go on performance, settings, It'll say let Windows choose what's best for my computer. Here you want to press adjust for best performance and press, press apply. And then OK. OK that. Close that. Right, so now we're going to run Cinebench again. See if it's improved our score. So as you can see that's gained as nothing, our score's actually worse, that's strange, but we'll carry on anyway. Right, the next thing we're going to do is, well as you can see at the moment, we've got the uh, cool and quiet enabled and the power saving feature so it's at 943 megahertz when it's not under load and then as soon as you put it under load and start running Cinebench you can see it will go up to 3.3 gigahertz so the next thing we're going to do is restart the PC And we're going to turn the power saving features on the CPU off. So now we're back in Windows. Going to run the benchmark again. OK, 
camera out of focus. So our score's even lower now, which is brilliant. It's clearly doing this on purpose, just to prove me wrong. But you can see there it's locked at 3.3 gigahertz all the time. So now we're going to go into task manager and look in processors and any processors we don't need uh, we're going to turn them off so we'll open the benchmark first so we're going to turn off uh, explorer because we don't need that right I think that's about it so we're going to try and run it again on your PC uh, if you're doing this on a gaming rig you might have Steam open, Origin open uh, maybe a mouse uh, or keyboard lighting software uh, maybe some software for your, your sound, your onboard audio or your sound card you want to close all of that because obviously you don't need any sound to run the benchmark um, you want to be using a PS2 keyboard and mouse really but a USB one's fine as long as it's uh, driverless um, graphics card wise you're actually better off with an Nvidia card because Nvidia drivers use uh, less resources than AMD cards generally do um, you want to keep your processor as cool as possible, overclock it as high as you can make your memory as fast as you can, if you can't make your memory go any faster uh, you want to make sure your timings are as tight as they'll go these things that I'm doing are all to just improve efficiency by small amounts Right here you can see now we've actually got a bit of a gain on our last couple of scores, 491 but we still haven't beaten our first score which is uh, quite strange, that must have been a bit of a fluke so uh, once you've finished running this you want to open Explorer, you go on File, Run and then type in Explorer into that box and then you can get your Explorer back here uh, so the next thing that we're going to do is set the priority in Windows for Cinebench itself. So if you come to this window here, we don't need Explorer open again. So we just need Task Manager up. And if you're on this screen here, you'll notice that you can set the affinity, which is the number of cores the CPU will a, a, let that program use and here you can go set priority um, so you can set this to normal which it's on normally which means it will prioritize it uh, the same as any other programs that are running in the background um, you can put it on high or real time now real time will put your CPU at a hundred percent and your mouse won't even be able to move if you select this that is what you need to run it in, it'll look like your computer's frozen but if you try to select it in from this window here it'll, it won't do it and it'll say it'll change it to high instead um, so you can see there it's only selected high not real time and your score will improve with high and uh, I'll show you that quickly just now Now as you can see, you can still see the squares going round on the screen but they are, it looks like they're going down a lot more each turn that's because it's sort of skipping a few frames and not showing you all of the detail
So there we go, 488, that's lower than last time. Again, it's proving me wrong, but in a usual case, it would actually score higher in real time. So the next thing you want to do is go on Show All Processors from All Users here, and then it will allow you to select Real Time Priority, and if you check that, it should say Real Time there. And you want to close your Task Manager again. Uh, and then what I usually do is put it, this off to the side, um, like this. Just move the tripod. There you go. Right. And then you want to press run. And it will wait for a few seconds, come up with run. And now, even if I move the mouse, you can see the mouse on the uh, screen won't move. Uh, if you do this so that Cinebench is on screen, it will stay black on, on that side and you won't be able to see the squares going round. A good thing to do when you're running the benchmark like this is to time how long it takes on high priority uh, before you run it so that you can tell if your computer's frozen or not. Uh, another way to tell is if you have crucial ballistics uh, RAM, if the lights stop light flashing then that means it's probably crashed because it can't blue screen when it's running in real time because 100% of the CPU will be going to this. Now as you can see we've scored 499 there which is the highest score yet. I was hoping for 500 but obviously it's not done that. Uh, and as you can see here um, now that the CPU's finished rendering that image it's come up with the full image again. Uh, and then to make your screenshot, all you need to do is uh, open Explorer and CPU Z back up and you're done.